Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold on to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say in Mark, Matthew 6, 25, Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. It's not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. That phrase, take no thought for your life, actually means to not be anxious about your life. Do not be anxious. Anxiety worry worry and anxiety that phrase to hate one and love the other refers to preference so jesus taught against uncontrolled desires for money and some people that is why it's difficult for them to receive miracles of provision because they are so full of anxiety and when you are anxious you are tensed up you are no more patient you no more trust god you now want to help god you now want to help God. Because as far as concerned, God is too slow. You now start devising ways of assisting God. Anxiety, tension, pressure. And it is because sometimes we put ourselves in competition. And sometimes we put ourselves under the pressures that are not called for. You know? You want to be like others. You want to get to where others have got into. You too want to give the same testimony other people are giving. So all of a sudden, God is too slow. God is not trying enough. And when you bring yourself under that environment, you hinder yourself from experiencing the miraculous. You stop the miraculous because you're no more in faith. You can't be in worry and be in faith. <laughs> you can't be in anxiety and be in faith. You can't be under tension and be in faith. Faith is rest. I've never seen anybody resting under tension. <laughs> the man is resting. And he says, Ooh. no, the man is not resting. The man is walking. When you rest, God walks. When you rest, God walks. And I believe there's a, there, there, you know, there are a lot of miracles of provision released within this week of teaching. And people must know how to receive it by resting. Resting doesn't mean joblessness. Resting doesn't mean do nothing. Resting means trust God. Trust God. And when you trust God, you're not under pressure and tension. And you know, in that scripture where we read in Matthew 6, he talked about the unbridled desire for money. The unbridled desire for money will lead to worry. You cannot serve God and money. And brother Paul reiterates this in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 7 to 11. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 7 to 11. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment let us therewith be content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. They, have, they cannot stay in faith. Therefore, they cannot pray the prayer of faith. Because they have erred from the faith. And when you err from the faith, what is the next thing? They have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So he said, believer, no more joy of salvation. He's no more contented in Christ. Christ is too slow. Christ is not enough. He is under pressure, undue pressure. Why? Comparing themselves with themselves, they are not wise. Unbridled desire and uncontrollable appetite for the things of this world. He says they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. So when we are worried, sometimes it's because of the love for things. When we love things, when we love money, when we love fame, we love relationships. 
The system of this world, what we call the world system, thrives in the uncontrolled passion for things. It thrives in the uncontrolled passion for things that will eventually lead us out of the will of God for our lives. You see yourself chasing after shadows. The love of money is the root of all evil. That is a desire to satisfy things at all cost will lead to several hurtful laws. That is an immoral appetite for money. That is you have an immoral relationship with material things. It's not healthy. It's an immoral relationship. The love of money. A wrong relationship with money. Oh, money is good. But money must not take the place of what Christ has offered you. And you know, when people are like that, they get into things, for example, they begin to lie. They tell all kinds of lies, play all kinds of tricks, play all kinds of gimmicks. They take jobs that will not give you the time to serve God. You know what I'm talking about? They take jobs that keep them busy all the time. So they can't pray and they cannot serve God. And they cannot study their Bible. Why? Because they're busy. And such people, when the devil releases a blow at them, they totally lose balance. It's a trick of the devil to get you to where he can take you out. Any job that keeps you out of prayer and out of the word of God, it's not healthy for you. Any job. It doesn't matter how much they pay you on it. That takes you, you can't pray. You can't even study your Bible. Because you're working. <laughs> it's a world system. It will take you out. It will take you out. It's just a matter of time. It will take you to a place where nobody is there to give you support. Then it will strike you where you cannot say in the name of Jesus. Because even when you're saying it, you yourself know that there is nothing inside. You are empty. <laughs> in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> it's coming without strength. He has name. He can't even form the words. Can't even say in Jesus' name. It takes strength to form the words in Jesus' name. So because of the he has name, he has name. Then I say, I'm not hearing you. What? He has name. He has name. <laughs> say, I don't know here. I don't know here. <laughs> I say here. Yeah. I don't know here. <laughs> I know Jesus. I don't know here. <laughs> and the next thing is he takes you out. He takes you out. You can't replace your place of serving God, the word of God and prayer for anything in this world. Nothing is worth it. Nothing is worth it. Is the life not more than raiment? Is life not more than raiment? Teaching good? 